A dual rotary encoder is one of the most important electromechanical devices found in the cockpit of an aircraft. I'm going to show you an easy way to connect them to your flight simulator, but before I do, I've been sharing a lot of ideas I acquire in the real world of flying with the flight sim community. So please make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video so that others can benefit from it. In a nutshell, a dual rotary encoder usually includes a push button and allows us to modify two different sets of values and change an additional setting with the push button. If you follow these instructions, you will have a full working encoder for Flight Simulator, X-Plane, and Prepared. First, we need to obtain the encoder. I have used Desktop Aviator, PropWash Sim, eBay, and even Amazon to obtain the following encoder. Prices range anywhere from $11 to $14. The second item we need is a Leo Budner BBI-32 USB interface card. This will run about $40. Nothing is required for the simulator to detect the encoder. Just plug and play, and honestly, the hardest part is the wiring. You can do some soldering or custom modifications to get the connections going. I will show you exactly what needs to be connected and how, but I will leave the wiring up to you. The encoder arrives exactly as pictured, but I did the soldering myself with a kit I ordered on Amazon. Let's look at the top part, which we will analyze as two sides. Try to think of these as your inner outer knobs or small large knobs. These control the smaller knob with its own ground connection. This side controls the larger knob with its own ground connection. The bottom part is your push button, also with a ground connection. Connect these to the BBI-32 interface card as shown. Each side will use three connections for a total of six and the push button will use two for a grand total of eight connections. Now we need to download the interface program for the card because it has to be able to detect that some of the inputs come from an encoder. You can download the encoder configuration software for free in the product download page for the card. We tell the software that buttons 1, 2, 3, and 4 are in fact encoders. And this will prepare the card to treat the inputs as such. That's it. You're done. Now let's see what happens when we rotate the outer knob to the right and left. Now the inner knob, right, then left. And now let's test the push button. You can now go to the simulator and assign functions to each one of these buttons. A sample control would be to adjust the navigation or COM frequencies on the G1000. Remember, you have many more inputs that you can use on the card. In my other video, I showed you how to wire up a simple landing gear, but you can also do switches, push buttons, rotary encoders, and many more. As always, I do have to mention that these types of projects can be done for you professionally and will definitely enhance your flight simulator experience. My prototypes and final products are all built by Aviatech, so make sure to check them out. Encoders are essential for a very good flight simulator experience, and I know they can be a little bit hard to set up, so please share this with your friends. Also like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.